Good evening and welcome to the convention series night. It is Monday night, DJM TV convention series evening. I'm John Young with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV. And tonight we're going to be talking about the gear we use for doing our shows. For a lot of DJs, they're trying to get into the podcast world because as we know, video is basically the thing. That's the main area for folks nowadays. So we are going to be talking about that. And that means we're going to be hitting a lot of things here in the next 45 minutes. So if you see things here and you're watching this after the fact, you're probably going to have to direct message me with any questions you might have because they, once the show is over, it's not going to be posted out on YouTube and Facebook and such where it's easy to ask questions. So you'll have to reach out to me and I'll do my best to answer any of the questions you might have. We're going to look at um, the video capture, uh, so different video capture methods, which is what you're seeing right here. Um, audio capture methods, and then we're going to look at, um, talk a little bit about some of the lighting, uh, and then I'll wrap up with some of the software. Now, on the email that went out, there should have been, uh, if you should have gotten that email, it had all the links of the, a lot of the gear we're going to talk about. Initially, that was about 50 items. I cut it down to, I think, 20, 25, because there's some things that, like a mic stand. You know, most of you know what a mic stand is. I've got some small ones that we use for the mobile things. If you have questions on that, that's fine. I tried to go through and find, um, in most cases, the links, like if it was something that are, are some of our sponsors, like NLFX, if it's something that they had, I put the link, their link in there. Otherwise, these are Amazon links. And yes, they are affiliate links. Um, because if you're going to buy it, it's the same price if you buy it with our link. Or if you go right to Amazon, and it would be uh, it's something that we'll get credit for. And then Amazon loves us more. So there's a whole thing with that. But we won't get into that tonight. Okay, so first off, um, video capture methods. In today's world, the cell phones have become so good that they can do a variety of different things when it comes to shooting video, whether it's podcast capability or if it's going to be even doing like we are tonight with the Zoom. Now, in the Zoom world, we're looking at four different videos or four different um, ones. I'm going to point to the cameras and look at the camera. So you get the first one. This is the Logitech 920. This is one I use typically in a studio. It has a little bit of video processing going on with a webcam app that is part of the, uh, you can buy that as an Apple edition. PC, there's a different version of the webcam app, but basically you can do a little tweaking of colors and such. So that's what I'm looking, that's that one. Down here, I've got a, a MacBook Pro, a Retina. So it's got the FaceTime HD camera. That's a, a seven, right there, I'm talking to you. That's a 720. And that laptop, of course, you're seeing a little bit of difference in the images. And that's why I wanted you to be able to see it. Still doing a very nice job. Now the difference between a, a Macintosh and, and a, a PC is some PC laptops are still being shipped with a six, I think 640 by 480, really a lower resolution webcam. So if you're going to be, we'll be talking about more webcams, but that's what you're seeing right there. Right there, right here, uh, this is a, um, an iPhone. This is an iPhone 8 right there you're looking at, and you're seeing, you can see actually between, again, you're almost a little bit more definition between that and what we're seeing from the laptop. iPhone 8 is obviously a little bit newer technology, the iPhone 8 and all, all of this is actually an incredible device. I, I just We've been using it for different things, and I'm, I'll talk about that when we get back to it. And the final device, there you are. <laughs> i got to see which window I'm in. Is a, this is a, an iPad. This particular iPad is the 9.7-inch um, um, uh, Pro, the iPad Pro. They have now the 10.5-inch, uh, which has a step-up camera on this. And I'm using the front-facing camera on this as, as well I, I am on the phone. The iPad camera on the new one, the 10.5, 10 and a half inch is just a hair bit better, but it's very, very compatible. It's just a little bit higher resolution and has a little bit better color pickup. Multiple options. You can, even on the iMac, of course, it has its own built-in FaceTime camera, which is very similar to what's on the laptop. The reason that I prefer in most cases to use an external is, and I'm going to take this off and it's gonna get really weird and I'm gonna show it to you down here. I'm gonna, we're gonna show it to you on the iPad is that this is the 920. The 920 is my preferred webcam. It's not the latest generation, actually. Um, I, I'll share that screen in just a second. The 920, uh, I believe, is replaced with the 922, and there's the 930. This is a Logitech, by the way. See, that's what it looks like from what I'm seeing. Uh, the, the 920 is, the reason I went to it is not only was it a 1080p and it's a nice camera, it also has the ability to be used with a, a, a tripod, a camera mount. So I can use a camera mount, excuse me, like what I have here. What I'm holding the iPad up with is I've got a, a little clip and a uh, flexible arm. It can do that. The 930 can also do the same thing. 922 can also do the same thing where it will make sure I'm up there. Okay, hey, it doesn't look too bad. 
But those are very stable, very nice webcams. I'm just going to pop out to that screen so I can show you uh, where did that, where did they go? There we are. I'm going to share that screen with you, and then you guys can, can follow that. Um, Let's see, where, where are we at here? Um, you know, why am I not getting, I'm not hearing my, I'm not hearing my voice as, as loud as I typically do. It's kind of weird. I mean, it's coming through, but it's not as loud as it typically is. I'm um, sorry, I'm just getting distracted here. I want to go here and show you this. There we go. So this is this is the nine the nine twenty right here. And again, this is one I just showed you. This is one that a lot of the DJ and TV folks are using because it is a nice a nice webcam. Does a nice job. Colors you can do some adjusting and things. So it's a, a really solid solid unit. The nine twenty two is what replaced it. Again, Logitech nine twenty two. I'm going to shut some video off on some of these other feeds so they're just not as a, not as distracting because some of you are probably seeing multiple. So I'm just going to shut off a few feeds here. One moment here. Okay, now it should be just down to my mind. The 922 has a little bit better, um, a hair bit better in the graphics, they were saying with the element, and there's it does a, something with you, me being able to do some background effects that uh, removing the background, which is kind of cool, I suppose, but um, I believe if you, in our, our cheat sheet, our price sheet we had, where did that, where did that go? We're looking at um, the cost on this particular unit. Uh, the Logitech 920 is at like 50, 50 some dollars, and the Logitech 9, 922 is about $90. So there's definitely a, a difference in price. I, again, have, we just bought a couple more Logitech 920s because they are a really, really good camera, and they're very, um, very stable with what they do and such. So I, I would still highly recommend those. So you, that would be a USB um, option if you wanted to wanted to go that way and it would give you a nice a nice image now there's other things that um, we use when we are doing some of like when we were doing the hometown news podcast or the little news show we we kind of stepped it up and we went to a 4k camera and we were able to capture capture that and we go to the the iphone and the iphone camera is actually somewhat seems if in the right situation with the, the color and such you can with the I'm sorry, not the, the rear facing camera. If you can do the video with that, and if you have an I, the Apple Watch, you can actually preview it here and you can see and get a really, really good image because the back camera on that thing is, is getting to be camcorder level ready. Um, let me go back to my screen share and I'll show you a couple more things here that uh, it doesn't pop back quickly and easily. So, so going down in, this is the camcorder that we typically use. It's just a Sony, um, it's the uh, FDR AX33. There's 53, there's other versions of it. This one I believe is, is running around somewhere under $800. It's like 750. I found a couple of these on Best Buy and they were in the 550 range open box. Fabulous, um, fabulous units. I really like it when it had us kind of a floating head or floating eye on it uh, lens. So it will kind of take the bounce out of your, your recording. Nice colors, does a very nice job. It has on the top of it right here, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see, there is a hot shoe there. And what that allows me to do is I can take that off and put, um, if I had a Sony mic, they, they have a, a mic that works that, I can use a, a light there. Or I can, um, you put a microphone, I'll show you in just a few minutes, and we use one of our interview mics as a handheld, or excuse me, as a shotgun mic. Just a really, I, it's a nice camera. I've been very happy with it. We talked to the Sony people at the uh, last show we were at because there was a Sony booth there. And they have one that's going to be coming out that's a step up on this one, but it's going from you know $800, let's call it, to about $1,500. But it has a lot of capabilities that this doesn't have, this one does not have yet or didn't have when it came out. And some of the newer ones in this are a little bit nicer, but for the money, the the uh, the, the AX33 is my my device of choice. Now you can also use, you could also use a DSLR camera. A lot of people use that. They have the Canon or Nikon, what have you, some higher end ones. And those work incredibly well for getting, capturing video also. I don't, I didn't go that route because basically my cam, camera, because we run a local newspaper, is busy on that type of thing, shooting pictures and such. So I don't use those. I kind of like the camcorder because of the autofocus capability. When I used the camera this is way back um, they didn't have the autofocus to the level of what a camcorder does and I wasn't happy with that 
Now there's times where I, I'm not happy with the autofocus because of, you know, say if I'm doing a two person shoot and I'm over here and the other person's over here and the camcorder is focusing between us, it's now focused on this stuff behind us. And that's not so cool, but it, it still functions and does some, some pretty neat things. And for some people, the DSLR is going to be the way to go. Either way, you're coming out of those devices with an HDMI signal. So we're going to go bouncing back to, to my, my share. There's two different uh, devices that, that I would recommend for capturing an HDMI signal. Uh, both are from Blackmagic Design. I've got to back, out the, back this up a little bit. This is their uh, Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And I think I have probably four or five of these. This is part of what we take on the road with us when we are going to, to Vegas and we're going to shoot and use camcorders. A few years back, we, three years back, we were at, at um, the Tropicana and we were using the, the Sony cameras and we were crisscrossing the cameras so that the, the two people speaking would be kind of looking at each other a little bit. And we were using this. So we came out of the camcorders of the HDMI into this, out of this. Now this goes into Thunderbolt. Some PCs have Thunderbolt, most Macs have Thunderbolt and we would go into the Mac with the Thunderbolt. This little guy will get warm, no question about it. It's doing a lot of video processing but it works and works very well. You can run multiple of these. On my laptop, I rent, I've run two of these um, without a problem. Again, it's going to get warm, a little warm, so you don't want to stick, stick them you know, someplace where they're under books or something, under papers where they can't breathe a little bit. The second thing is when you're running these, they do suck power from your laptop. So you can't, we can't do a full show on a laptop without having it plugged in, like a one-hour show. We can get about 30 minutes on a laptop when it's doing this and streaming video. But anyway, this is, this is for the people who have Thunderbolt. The next one is a variation of, and this, this one is the, um, the USB HDMI, what, I don't remember what they called this one, actually right off the top, I must have it over here. Um, where's my video? Ugh, I had, I'm, I slipped down in my, I slipped down in my, my notes too far here. Okay, um, yeah, I don't have that here. Why don't I have it here? Blackmagic Design. And it was the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And this is the Intensity Shuttle. There it is. Excuse me. For, and this is USB 3, which now is more PC uh, compatible. The USB, USB 3 uh, on the Macintosh isn't supported, but some people have reported that it has worked on Wirecast. So that would actually give you a fourth or third each HDMI input. What's kind of cool about Wirecast as an example, which is what we use quite often, is that you can go in Wirecast, I can, have US, I can have USB camera there, I can have a second 920, I can have my FaceTime one, and I could have two of the HDMI. So I can actually have five different camera shots, in essence, if I wanted to, on with Wirecast and with uh, the capability of, of all these uh, devices we're, we're uh, talking about here. So let me just kind of check here on my notes. Um, so as far as the camera goes, the it used to be that... It, back when it was getting into the, the higher quality cameras and everybody was, you had to have this really super high quality video. That kind of took a step back when the cell phones came out and everyone get, became very comfortable watching cell phones. Now our clients and such are getting used to better quality video again. They want to see better quality images, whether it's on a cell phone or tablet, they're expecting to see a little more sharpness and not as much blur. So you, you can't use some of that old technology that's not sharp and, and looks good because it's not acceptable acceptable anymore. There was a time about 2012 to 2014 where people would be like, oh yeah, it looks like something from a cell phone. We're good with that. Well, now cell phones are just way too good and people just don't, um, don't get into those uh, grainy videos. A big thing, no, with whatever method you go with when it comes to the podcasting is to have a, a methodology of holding that camera. You don't want to be holding this. Sometimes that is cool. And if you watch a lot of uh, sitcoms and such, you'll see the cameras are always kind of moving. They aren't like holding completely still unless you're watching uh, 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 Modern Family. And when they go to the couch scene, you'll notice that some of the characters or some of the people when they're, they're talking on the couch scene, some they hold, they hold steady for. And some there's a little bit of movement. It depends what kind of a feel they want. And that's directors and, and the, that performance. For us, we want to be able to have our cameras as steady as possible to get the best shot because people get you know, the seasick thing very, very quickly. Okay, let's jump into audio capture. I'm going to show you a few things and then we're going to come back and then we're going to, uh, then we're going to uh, actually listen to some of these things. So again, if you have questions, please um, have, hold on to those or put them in a question and answer area and I'll, grab, I'll jump on those when we get to the end. 
Uh, first off, when you're talking about mobile devices to capture, and I'm actually wearing one of these and you'll get to hear it in a few minutes. This is from Rode, this is their smart lav. And as you can see that it has a tip ring ring sleeve. This is a mobile device configuration. There's tip ring sleeve, which is your headphones, typically for you know the eighth inch jack for your headphones. But the tip ring ring sleeve is what's needed for your mobile devices because it also has the you know the microphone and it has the head uh, the audio going out. We're not utilizing that in this particular configuration. We just want to have a microphone. The Smart Lab I have probably tested, I think twelve microphones because once we did the first video on a Smart Lab, a lot of these Chinese companies started sending out their their lapel mics. Some of them are ten, fifteen dollars, and I, they stink. It's worth the $70 to buy this because I have only had one of these crap out on me and that's because I ran it through the washer. Otherwise, I think I have, I, I have four of them that I know where they are. I'm gonna save that because they're, they're, a, small, they're a small little bag right here, if you can see it on, on the little, the tiny little bag. And they're easily, I put them in my pocket when I'm doing a show and then I get done with the show, I stick it in there, put it in my pocket and then it went into the washing machine or it gets lost. So anyway, for mobile devices, the smart lab is a very cool thing. Now, maybe you wanna use that smart lab for your camcorder. Well, they have an option for that. This is, I wanna make sure I get this right. I believe this is the, this is either the SC3 or SC4. What does it say there? We'll go SC, the SC3 from Rode. And what this does is it converts, as you can see on the little diagram right here, it's showing you one, two, three, four, tip ring, ring sleeve, and it converts it down to a tip ring sleeve. Now this microphone could be used for my camcorder or it could be used for, for uh, uh, your camera, either one that it has that configuration. Again, the Rode lapel is a pretty nice lapel. Now let's say you wanna do something where you have two, you're doing an interview. Um, Comica? I'm gonna, this is one of the companies, a Chinese company that does some direct sales on Amazon and they have got a dual lapel. You'll see down here, it's a tip ring sleeve. They actually, in the packet comes with the adapter for a tip ring ring sleeve. And we've actually used this on mobile, um, the mobile devices doing some interviews where you can have, you, and it's, there's a lot of wire here. So you plug it in your device, you put the adapter on, you plug it in your mobile device and then you can clip one onto, you know, one on each person and now you can do an interview. And I believe that I want to say the wires are probably seven, six or seven feet long. They're very, very long. Surprisingly, they're not expensive and their sound quality is very, not road quality, but very good for their price by far. I've used these probably at three shows now and I don't use them a lot. They're only used in certain situations, but they have been a very solid option and such. And again, all these things are, are in that um, email that I sent out earlier. If you guys want to pull that out and kind of refer to that. Um, next, in the audio world, this is a, a microphone, and zoom in a little bit, that a lot of you have seen in our videos. When we are at noisy trade shows, this is the Audio Technica, and there's a couple of different versions. There's a newer version of this, but this is the one that we use and we've been using. This is the STR6550, 6550, STR6550. If you go Audio Technica and 6550, you'll find this one. There are other Audio Technica shotgun mics. This one is relatively inexpensive. It's under $70. I picked some of them up as low as under $49. If you just have to kind of watch. But this little microphone has been very durable. I own, what you're not seeing in this particular picture is a little coily part because it can stretch and be a coily. It's got about maybe three feet of wire, but it stretches out to maybe four feet. Battery operated, double uh, A battery that you can get, um, I can sh shoot a whole trade show off a, a brand new battery on this particular one. But it is a, a microphone for doing an interview. You can set it in the middle section and you get kind of that cardioid pattern and then you can set it, push it to the top the little switch. It's a three position off uh, cardioid type shape. And then you have a tele, uh, more of a, um, a shotgun mic uh, shape. And it definitely does. I mean, if I'm, if I'm setting it in interview mode and I don't have one of those here, I, sh I should have said, but you guys have seen us talk on those so much. If I set it in the middle, it picks up. It would pick up two of us standing right here. If I had someone standing six feet away, I can set it to the more of that telephoto or that um, boom mic type thing, shotgun mic, and it will pick up that person very, very well. What I like about it is it's noise canceling on the sides is pretty solid, so I can interview people in a noisy room with this microphone, and it does a very nice job. You'll see right here where I've got the mouse. That's these are some. This is what comes in a kit. You've got your quarter inch adapter. Um, you've got this little device and it has a cold shoe. So this is where this particular microphone can be used as a shotgun mic. So if I would be doing a podcast, I could actually put this in a stand because I've got the little mic stand bracket. I could have it off camera and I have done this in some, uh, one of our studios is set up with one of these 
and it's an off-camera mic and it picks up the voice very well. Or if I need to, you know, do a handheld, I can do it. Or on a cam, there's just a lot of flexibility. And again, it's not breaking the bank whatsoever. Let's see. So getting into uh, ways to actually cop capture the audio. Uh, devices to go from our microphones into our devices. Um, these basically, everything we've talked about so far, just plug into either the camcorder or um, the mobile device. Now let's get into to the things that will basically allow us to use our old reliable microphones. Um, in this particular case, it would work with my studio mic. I've got some Shure 58s here that we're gonna do a, do a demo here in a minute. But most of these things will allow us to use that Shure 58. And at trade shows, that Shure 58 is better than a lot of microphones out there for uh, being able to capture, capture the audio. Um, again, so what we're looking at here is a USB uh, converter. So this one really wouldn't go for the mobile show all that much. But what this will allow me to do with the Shure XT, X2U is I can, put in, I can run my XLR into that and have whatever I want for microphone and bring it right into my computer. In that particular, the little Shure thing's under $100. I've seen it as low as $80 and I've seen it sell a lot of times for $119. But it's under $100, and it's a nice little unit. We've used this um, when I'm, I have my system set up on the other side, and I need to do something, and I don't want to run a full board. And I say full board, we know multi-channel board. I can just hook this up, and I've got audio, and I'm good to go. Next, we've got from iRig, the iRig Pro Duo. Uh, this is a Duo 2, actually. And this gives us two XLR ins, and it can actually come out now. And this one can go into the lightning. Um, it can go into USB or it can go into the lightning connection on my, my Apple device. This is actually something that I have, I've got one of them that I have used, which is the da -da -da right there, the iRig Pro. Uh, but the Duo is one that I, I've been looking at. I believe these are like 100 and, oh, let me give you the pricing on this. The iRig, uh, where are they? 150, so what, this is 200, the other one's 150 or under that. Two channels can come in here. I've got, I've got some gains. I've got some LED things to follow and such, and I can run the two XLRs in and be able to do you know one a little hotter, one a little not so much, depending upon what's going on. With this particular one, I have you know one channel going in, and then you can kind of see how it can go out to different things. What's really kind of cool about it is the ability to preview. You can see that you can plug the headphones into these. You can do that with these devices, and that's really quite cool. I mentioned earlier the S, the Rode SE3 cable. Uh, going back to that microphone, that wire, that uh, the microphone that we like so much right here. This has got a tip ring sleeve connection. This will allow me to use that handheld microphone from Audio-Technica with my mobile devices. Now the sound isn't quite as, as loud as I would like it to be, but we have used this on occasions when we've done some interviews and such at conventions, and it has worked. This same can, a little device can be used with the Rode microphones that we're gonna look at here, that um, the, the uh, VideoMic Pro, which is something that we've used at a lot of trade shows also before we got into the handheld. The VideoMic Pro works for interviews where you're out in the field and you don't have a ton of background noise. And it's not so much the background noise, it's the back behind the people speaking noise. Because the Rode Video Pro mics, they cut off the sides, but it's the, whatever they get in line, they're gonna pick it up very, very well. Anyway, this converts a regular tip ring sleeve to a a uh, connection for the cell phone with the other one connected a cell phone type microphone to a regular camera microphone. Continuing on for microphones, we're gonna step it up here now in, in studio. This is what I'm using right here, the RE320 from ElectroVoice right here. Um, actually, I have two of them and you're gonna get to hear them hooked up through different boards in our test here in a few minutes. This is kind of an industry standard. It has some built-in pop filters and different things. So it sounds good it reacts well to our voice the voices and such you've seen numerous of our dj and tv folks have this the positive is that it's a great sounding mic a little expensive uh, links again it's about 300 dollars, i believe um and all effects ben will take care of you and get you hooked up with that but you come out with an xlr and you have to go into a board of some sort convert it over and go into that and we'll talk about boards in a minute then hooked up to it and if i can see you can see it here the bracket of the bracket is the uh, ElectroVoice bracket I've got going here. And then the arm that I use is uh, the Rode one, uh, the Rode PSA1 swivel mount stereo boom. Now, Ben has got a, a better mount than that. And I was looking on the website and I could not find it, unfortunately. And I believe it's a little cheaper than the Rode. But you need to have, when you've got bigger mics, you need to have a heavier, heavier boom stand that can handle the weight and basically stay where you want it to stay. A lot of the, the $20 ones won't do that. I have some $20 ones and I use them for webcams. 
uh, just because I've got them in different spots out in the, out in the uh, back shed. And I don't have to uh, worry too much about that. Now the Video Mic ME was something that Rode came out with, and I'm a big fan of Rode. And what this particular one is, is as you see, it's a tip ring ring sleeve, and it's meant to plug right into an older device, meaning an older Apple or an, a um, Droid device. This sounds really good on one, with one condition, one caveat. You can't have your, your protector on it. You can't have your case on it. You have to take your case off so it can get basically nice and tight in there. When I have the case on, for some reason, when I would do this with my iPhone 6 Plus, um, 6S Plus, whatever I had, anyway, the 6, I used it on that, um, that phone, and it would sound fabulous as long as the case was off. When the case was on, it would kind of have some static every once in a while. Works on the Droid. I was using it on the Droid the other day, and I, again, I took the case off from it, and I could use that. And then I realized that I didn't have enough memory on the Droid, so my video halfway through died. So great little mic. I believe they're about $50 or $60. If you're looking for something that's quick, uh, that's going to give you a little bit of shotgun, but pick up some really nice um, audio from you in front, cell phone this, and you could be in business right there. And you're going to have a nice, a nice sounding little system. On the back, there is a headphones jack, so you can actually do some monitoring of what's going on, depending upon what your software can do. So it's a, it's a nice little mic. This is for shotgun mics for the the prosumer. This is probably the best. This is the Rode. This is the the Video Mic Pro. We've got I think three or four of these, and we have broken different parts on them, and we've been able to get replacement parts. Uh, they're I believe they're what are they? Two hundred two thirty. They're under under two hundred thirty dollars. We picked up most of ours for about one hundred ninety nine, and they do a nice job. There's some adjustments for how much gain you want with it in the back, and and you're on off and different things. I, 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 for the situation, these are a great mic. We had to go to interview handheld mics on our studio. And, and when we've used these, we started out actually using that in this room when we were going to be doing our live, uh, live little show here uh, when we were recording that. But we got away from that because the room is too echoey. I would need to get more, um, more foam and such put on the walls, and I didn't have time to do that. Aside from that, it picked us up incredibly well. You can be eight to 10 feet away from it and it will pick you up very well and it has nice canceling on the side. So for the right application, like at a wedding where you're not having a lot of noise, say we're interviewing during the dinner time, this would be great if I'm doing a podcast and I can set my camera and put that on top. A lot of uh, podcast people use this microphone as their main microphone. If you're looking for something inexpensive to sit on the desk, this is a USB microphone from Blue. This is their Snowball microphone. We have these. A few of our DJ and TV folks are using these. Solid microphone, very inexpensive. They're about $40 or less or under $50. They do a nice job. They're not, they're not the quality of this. But then again, I'm not having the this and that and the arm and such. It's just that sitting on the desk, and it does a decent job. So for getting started, this would definitely be a great option. We're going to get into um, some of the processing. Uh, we had the one Sure earlier that hooked us from the, uh, from the microphones to the computer. Now we're getting into uh, some stuff from Personas here, one from Personas. Personas has a few of them in the audio, bo the audio box USB world. This is a two-channel. They have a four-channel. It's a little bit older. They have some newer devices out there. But this is one that Ben and a few others use. I used to use one like this until I needed more channels because of dropping audio in. They are a nice, clean board, and they have some really cool features. It's just that there, um, there wasn't enough channels on this, and I wanted to go a different direction. But I would the Persona stuff is really kind of an industry standard, and what is the Persona uh, running? It's about $100 for this device. Um, and Ben's got them up there, and, and they, uh, again, do a nice job. And with the ability to control your gains and things, you can monitor there's a headphone in the, the jack in the back. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money, there are different options. Uh, this is a very inexpensive one that a lot of people are using for podcasts. The Behringer, the, the Xenix uh, Q502, this USB. Now, these are all with the ability to hook into a computer. You have a single microphone. You've got the ability to run uh, a line in so I can run my music in. I have my microphone in, and there's some, I can run some quarter-inch jack, whatever. Basically, I get one XLR in. I do have one of these, and I have used this when we have gone and, and done a remote, a remote uh, studio where we're taking the laptop, and I want to have one good microphone uh, for whatever the reason, and it's going to be in a, a situation. Generally, when I'm coming off a board at a uh, – we did a, a city. Uh, the city was doing a, uh, a meeting, and they were, they were mic'd at the stage, and I just pulled an XLR off their board and ran it into this and then ran it through to do the live stream. It worked wonderfully. Quick, easy, inexpensive. I mean, that little th is under $60. But if you need to step it up, 
you've got the 1204 USB, which gives you four. Um, you're actually going to hear uh, the, 80, the 802, which is a, uh, a two channel. This is a four channel or four, four XLR. Um, what's kind of cool about it is that they're inexpensive, they're fairly simple. They, they do a nice job. Now I've taken these out and I actually have put them to some speakers to run some audio. What's, as you get, you start pushing to use it like a, for a music mixer and pushing it at a higher volumes, they start to get kind of crackly. They're not meant for that. They're meant to basically use as a input device for podcasting. Um, the Behringer, the this is the 1204. This is under a hundred dollars and the 802 is right in that uh, price range also. And you're going to get to hear that in a few minutes. Now, the one I'm actually using on our main studio, and this one does, does not leave, is the Yamaha MG10XU. Again, USB, four mics in. It has some different things with pad compression. It has built-in effects that I can make myself sound like Darth Vader if I wanted to, and I'd have to go play with them. But it's a, a nice a nice little board, and it sounds very, very good. That's, that's uh, my preferred one here. Initially, this is the one I, I started out with, with from Yamaha. This one actually has gone into the house and my son has this, the AG06. I liked this one in many ways. What I didn't, I was kind of disappointed about is we have no compression in this particular unit, but it had the ability to bring mics in and adjust and do some things with that. Pads on that, uh, has uh, phantom power on the, the one channel you can see there. It uh, is it's a nice board, but it doesn't have, I'm getting back to this one, I have phantom power on all four mic channels. This only had phantom on the one, um, according to the way this system goes. The other thing I want to touch base before we actually do the audio uh, part of this and get into some questions is something that um, uh, Jared Wade turned me on to from uh, cloud. This is a cloud lifter. Basically what this is, is a mic activator. What this does is it will take a mic signal. It needs phantom power, but it will make that mic signal, it'll boost it like 25 decibels or something. I don't know. It's just some crazy amount. And that will make a huge, huge difference in the sound output of a microphone. So if you have a situation where your, your mic preamp just can't give you enough and you, need, you want to be able to add, so you, can, you can add some more before you blow up the mic channel, this could definitely be a possibility. So it's something to, to look at. I actually have one on this microphone that you're listening to that's going into the Yamaha because then I can adjust the volumes and such a little bit better. But this is from Cloudlifter. They have a single uh, channel and they have a dual channel, which the dual channel is, I believe, two mics and then it just, it combines them down into one, boosts them both and puts them down into one. I believe that's how it goes, but this is the one I have and, and such. So I don't, uh, I don't play with the other, I haven't played with the other one. Okay, so that is... That is what we have there. So I want to go and I'm going to turn cameras back on here and we're going to go around and I'm going to talk to you about what each, each one of these has because we each, each one of these has a different, a different audio system. Uh, okay. First off, what I want to do is we've been listening to my voice. This is through the cloud lifter and going into the Yamaha board. We're going to take now and combine combine we're going to turn my mic off and then we're going to come over here does this buy the right one two 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 there we go hey there we are so this is the sure the sm58 coming through the yamaha board right now so that's what you're hearing me on is the sm58 now i have another 58 that should be right here check 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 do i have it on do i have it on Oh, hey, hey, you know what? If I turn the audio on, check, check, check. There you are. So this is coming through the bearing your board, which is, again, the Q802. And I'm hearing a weird echo on this. So this is kind of the interesting thing with the Behringer. I'm going to take these out because <laughs> it's giving me a weird echo. What's interesting about this is that it's giving me the, the almost more volume than coming through this particular board. I mean, right now on the Yamaha, I have it kind of maxed out. I want to try something here. With, with, just kind of give me a second. I'm going to listen to. So I'm there. If I check, 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 one, two. Yeah, see, I can, I can bring the gain up, the master up, and it doesn't change anything when it comes to what's being captured up there. On the, the Behringer one, I got to turn this. I got to turn that one back down. On the Behringer, so I can turn a channel up the channel up and get a lot more. And then I can turn the master up and get a lot more. So I could, I've got a lot more 
a lot more for this application. Just the difference in boards. So we're gonna shut that off. Go back to this mic. So we've got the SM58s. And again, you were hearing from the Yamaha and it was running straight in with nothing, uh, just a flat EQ all the way and just gains. And then the bearing or flat EQ and the gains. But now I want to go here. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna shut this mic off and I'm gonna come over here. So now I'm using the 320 and I'm going through the bearing board. And I've got the volume. Let me just, I'm gonna go flat on this one. I, I don't have it. There we go. Bearing is flat. And this is what you're hearing from that. So it's the 320 going into the bearing board. And that is all we have there. To compare to the Yamaha board right now, which we have got going. So we have definitely a difference in the, the gain amount on this. And it, um, I, there's a different sound on it as you, as you listen to the two. Some will like one better than the other. You know, as I like that louder microphone, that is definitely impressive. Now, if I push it too much, you'll start to hear that static, and then we have a lot of issues. But the 320 on the Behringer and the 320 on the Yamaha. Okay, so now we're going to do, let's see, I've got that on. I'm going to shut this mic. And now can you hear me? Okay, what you're hearing now, we're on the iPad, and you're hearing me through that Rode lapel mic right here. Do, do, do. So this is a lapel mic. If I were be doing, if I wouldn't have any of these and you'd be listening to me, this is kind of what it would sound like. This lapel mic will work with any mobile device, iPhone, what have you. I've actually got that little adapter, that little lightning adapter. I've got that sitting here so I can use it with the iPhone. Every road now has that little white adapter. I'm not excited about that, but the iPhone 8 has a lot of capability, so I'm going to put up with it. But you're listening through the iPad right there. I see you with the lapel mic. I'm going to shut this back off. We're there. Okay. Next, we're going to go see the laptop. The laptop is what has the bearing on it. So that's why we're listening to that right there. And I want to come over to the iPhone next. Check. Can you hear me? There we are. So this is the iPhone, and the iPhone is just using its own own microphone. Nothing fancy with that. Oh, excuse me. No, hang on. The iPhone is using my headset. I have it set set to that. So right now you're hearing the i iPhone and the headset. I'm going to shut the headset off. So that's what. There we go. So now you're hearing the iPhone eight, and that's the microphone that's using that's picking up. We just did a video, if you watch those videos where we were comparing speakers, the Electro Voice speakers, the ELX 200s recently, we just used this. We figured it was gonna blow this microphone completely out of the water and have a big issue. It didn't. It actually sounded really good. We were pushing at 125 decibels at four, five, six feet away from the camera, and it sounded pretty good yet. It just surprised me. So the iPhone 8 is definitely, uh, they definitely put some stuff in this. It's pretty, pretty Okay. So we'll come back here. So for starting out, you can get into some sound and such fairly inexpensively and I'm getting that echo. So I have to start my headset again. So it will take the audio back there. Just give it a second here. But you can get into it very inexpensively or you know, you can spend a lot of money on, on your system depending upon what you're wanting to do. If you're wanting to have multiple, you know, multiple cameras and be able to do shots where you're doing a front shot and a side shot, you know, if you're wanting to do multiple things at like that, it can really get expensive. Um, lighting wise, uh, just a couple of things with lighting that we have, we found multiple point lighting is, is probably your best bet, which would mean um, having lighting to the left and to the right, because you can end up having a little bit to the lower and a little bit, you know, kind of multiple points. Ideally, one, two, three would be kind of nice, or one, two, three. I actually, in this particular case, I've got four, five, but the fifth one I've actually got turned to the other side because I didn't want to have it uh, in my eyes today. But having multiple lighting points is definitely a uh, uh, highly recommended. Uh, lighting temperature is another, another question some people have. And I prefer around that 4,000, um, whatever they can, the K, 4,000 K. They have, you know, the 2700 is your soft white. Getting into that between three and 4,000 gives kind of a nice warm color. 
Whereas if you get above that, you start to get washed out with the, the bluish color, and I'm not a huge fan of, of that. So that 4,000, um, a lot of the LED four-foot floodlights, that's what we use in the other um, shed with the weekend handyman area. We use those around the room, and that really looks, makes it look nice, makes, gives us a decent color, even the Minnesota people who are kind of white and pasty. It uh, is definitely they're not that expensive. Um, backdrops, curtains, green screen. Um, I've got acoustic tile over here in a different spot. There's a lot of different things for treating the, the area behind you, depending upon what you want that look, that video look to be. Uh, last thing I wanted to just hit on just for a, a, split, a split second or two. Uh, some people have asked about uh, some of the apps that we use, and we're going to, I'm going to share a couple of them. Wirecast is popping up right now. And I will get to that in just a second. I want to get to, where is that? Come on, where are you? It's not giving me that. There it is, Google. Google is what I want right there. So I should be sharing. There we go, I'm seeing that. Um, for live streaming, live streaming can be very simple. If you wanna do it from your cell phone, then you can go and there's a little icon at the bottom. Um, if you're going to live stream like from a page, you can click the uh, go live button and you're going to, I'll just kind of walk you through what we're going to see here. Um, this is, this is a way we basically do it when we're getting ready to go. Um, we could do the live right now and basically enter a little bit of information, a description and a title and boom, we go with tags and video games. Yeah, it doesn't, we don't do that. We use the connect feature, which allows us to go from software and it will give us some different codes. They'll give us the server that we need to be able to put this RT, PM or RTMP to put that information into the system on our wirecast. So then we can now uh, we have the stream key and we have that and then we enter all of our other information in. But from this, say if I connected here, and here's what's I screwed up a couple of times, because you can go and, and put this on your timeline or in, we can stream to a group or wherever we want to do it. And I a couple of times had it set so I stream to my <laughs> personal timeline. And it's like, wow, it's really quiet in the disc jockey news, but boy, my pastor is watching tonight. I wonder why he's pop. Yeah, that's what happened. But you end up getting that. And then when you turn on your feed and you're getting a stream, then this will light up as go live. It's not live yet until you click on this or you can schedule it to go live and do some different things with it. There's embed codes here. You can do that with, um, with Facebook and live. On the mobile app, you can be uh, doing some things with the stream and you can bring people in and such. That's kind of a thing that they've added here in the last several months. I've not done that because most of the time we're streaming from Wirecast. On the um, YouTube side of it, we can go and we can set up our events and get everything put together. But the uh, kind of a cool thing that they have come out with recently is camera, which we actually, I used this, this, uh, this concept in uh, Vegas when we did the last couple of, um, when I did those live things. Basically came in here, title, made it public and um, we, you know, testing and we made it public and then we go next and then it says smile for thumbnail. I don't know if it's going to take it. No, my camera. Oh, oh yeah. We're using the camera with zoom. <laughs> it won't go, but then we can go live and you know what, because there's no camera. Well, you know what I should have done is I should have made it go to the FaceTime camera because now it's going to try to connect and I've got way too many streams going. So anyway, that's, that's the YouTube thing. And I've kind of, kind of uh, probably messed everything up. Oh, for those of you wondering what this little uh, icon is up here, um, this is uh, TubeBuddy, which is kind of a software or a plugin that goes with, with uh, YouTube. Uh, yes, leave the site because I don't want it. And that little thing will uh, give you information and such on your videos. If you're in YouTube, TubeBuddy is one of many kind of partner things. Not that it's not a partner, meaning that they are, taking any kind of money or anything unless you subscribe to them, but it helps you to evaluate your videos against other people's videos and your channel against other people's channels and such. Then a lot of people use OBS. Uh, it's a free open source software that is going to do what Wirecast does. And I'm gonna give you give a quick little rundown of Wirecast. OBS, again, because it's free, doesn't have a lot of the features that Wirecast does. And that's what we're going to go to Next, and then I'll be have a couple of minutes for a couple of questions here. I think I'm here. Okay, cancel that. Yeah, it's looking for that Ultra Studio. Uh, Wirecast is basically a, and again, much of this is into OBS. It's the idea is that that down here we have layers. Yeah, uh, there's there's I believe five layers, and I'm only using a few of the layers. But you think about it as kind of like stacking pancakes or what have you, is that you can stack them up and you can put something on the top layer. So let's. Um, 
we click on this and this is a layer and the rest of this is transparent. Then we can come through and put um, this, uh, let's go to, uh, da, 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 let's go here. There we go. So now on the top layer, I have the ad that goes across the bottom and then on the next layer, I have the video. And if I wanted to put, you know, music, I could put, I could drop this in the same one or I could have another layer that was just like a music background music bed that loops. I could do something like that. Um, when, whenever I, I get my shot that I like, this is my preview screen over here and then I would click to move it across and now, and now it's going to be echoey but now it would be going live. So if I would be hooked up to go live or if I'm looking, if I'm recording, what you're seeing in the right hand is what everyone in the real world sees. And it, you can set up different shots, you can drop graphics in, you can do text things and a lot. You've seen this a lot. Of, this is what we're doing with Wirecast. Wirecast is kind of an expensive thing. It's not needed. You can use a free version of Zoom to record. You can use your apps to record to get started and such in the podcast world. This is where you're getting into streaming and you want to stream to multiple places because we could stream, there were some nights we were streaming twice to uh, Facebook, once to YouTube and once to Chew.TV, which is uh, kind of a music for music channel for DJs. And we were all doing those all at the same time off Wirecast and man, it, it taxed my computer, but we, we, made, it, uh, we made it work. Uh, let's see, there was, where did my little page go of notes? Let's see, software, YouTube, uh, YouTube, where there's a couple of different apps and I was hoping to hook up the iPad to, to the uh, computer and it just, I could not get it to, uh, to get it to, to function for some reason. Um, I'm really disappointed about that. But there's some apps out there. Wirecast has a Wirecast Go and I think it might be a couple of bucks. And that is a really kind of a cool program because it will allow you to do layers and have some different things at different spots on the shots. So it's definitely something you might want to uh, check into if you're, you're looking at, uh, for something like that. Otherwise, the app for um, from YouTube on the phone and, and the mobile devices is really quite good, um, surprisingly good, and how uh, how it will work. And you've seen, I've used that when we've done some of the live stream walkarounds where I go and take a picture because it says, you know, that, you know, smile for the, the you know, click, click, you know, bing, bing, click. And then you've got your, your thumbnail and then you do the video and off you go. So the YouTube app, definitely solid. If you want to do that, Facebook and their apps, you know, for the streaming is really solid now. They've done a lot with that. It's come a long way. And then if you need even more, you look at an OBS or you look at Wirecast itself. Okay. I think we have covered a ton of stuff. Of the, a ton of things. Um, okay. So I'm going to hit a couple of questions and some of them I might have actually answered already, but if you have more questions, please put those into the chat. I don't think, you know, I'm not sharing screen, so I'm good. Um, Michael asked about um, uh, the multiple feeds. When you're doing podcasting, really the most important part isn't so much the multiple feeds. You can shoot one video you record it, make it, make it look nice. The key thing with a video is you want to make it something that's giving the people value so they will want to do it. You want to have a, a hook in the beginning to kind of tell the value of what you're going to be giving them so they know that it's worth their 90 seconds or two minutes or five minutes. You need to say, hey, I'm going to answer this question for you today in today's little segment. Thanks for watching. And then you get into the content. Those, those things, you shoot, those video, shoot that little video and then you can upload that to places. The live stream isn't as important as it was probably six, six months ago to a year ago. The having the, the proper established or proper procedure with your video where you're, you're doing that little hook at the beginning to catch them. So they're like, yeah, I want to listen to this. This, could, this is something that's going to be important enough to me. And then to have decent quality, decent video are much more important than having, uh, having multiple streams and such. Um, Basic setup, um, I, if you've got a modern, uh, one of the newer phones, if you've got a 7 or 8, whether it's Samsung or Apple, you could really go a long way with that. Um, you can get this little, you know, this little little road, road lapel mic, which I'm all tangled up with. You know, you get something like this. This is a $70 lapel mic. This is going to get you a long, a long way. And then you just have, you know, set a couple of lamps up, have a nice little, you know, desk background, what have you. And you're going, to, you're going to be able to do an awful lot with that. You don't really need to have the high-end stuff. The, the nicer stuff is obviously great. But that, that phone, I wonder if I could do this. If I could switch cameras here. Oh, I can't do that. I was going to see if I could go and, and switch it to, the, to the, other, the other camera on, this, on my phone. So it would be coming from, from the... Uh, the rear-facing camera, the better quality camera, but the, the better those cameras are so much, so much better than what they, what they, uh, what they were. 
So thank you for that question. Uh, Scott, what do you have for me? Um, was that the MG6 mixer? Uh, yeah, you won't be able to use that, at the MG6, yeah, without the USB. I mean, it, it can still function, but, for, but it's, that's more of a wedding ceremony thing. You, you really need to have that USB if you want to use it for podcasting. Otherwise, you'll have to have some kind of a USB capture device, whether, you know, that simple Sure thing or, and they're so inexpensive right now. I would go with, uh, I would go with just, you know, breaking, breaking down and buying it and then selling that one if you wanted to. Or again, that, that's like, they're a wonderful little mixer for ceremony. They are a better ceremony mixer than the Behringer. Even though the Behringer might have sounded better, I wouldn't use a Behringer for a ceremony. I know a lot of people do. But after doing some testing over here on the other side and playing it a little bit louder, and it's like, gosh, if I wanted to play it a little louder, I don't want that scratchy sound. And they both had it. I've got two of them here. I've got the smaller and the bigger. So I would uh, keep that for the ceremony, and I would get that um, like a smaller version for, for the podcast. And again, for the podcast, the Behringer could be a great, great option. And get a hold of Ben, and he'll, he'll uh, hook you up with a, a great little deal on one of those if you wanted to go that route. Okay. Yeah, Jimmy does a nice job with graphics, but just don't tell him because I said that. Otherwise, it'll go right to his head. The next thing you know, he'll be painting his hair blonde. Uh, okay. Uh, no Australian accent. I'm sorry, Jake. I didn't do the Australian accent. So I didn't do a little groggy. You know, I didn't do any of that. So, Well, gang, I'm going to wrap things up. We're going to be back. Uh, Dan and Shaney are going to be doing a DJ Hangout. There should be two links. in. in um, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll find two links there. One, that's the YouTube. That'll take you there. I'll get that set up. The other one will be a Zoom uh, webinar where you can come in or a chat where you guys can come in there and you can talk. Um, Shaney's got some things. They're going to be going through a little bit of kind of a rundown uh, with some some things, and then they're going to get into get into their show uh, for the night. So you guys will kind of watch for a little while and then towards the latter part, then you'll be able to engage and ask some questions and just kind of hang out and have some fun with uh, Dan and Shaney tonight. So thank you very much for watching and being part of our first convention series night here. We'll be doing these uh, every week. You can go to uh, djntv.com, click on a convention series. You'll see the schedule. We're starting to get our fall schedule lined up. And if you could share that link to, with your friends and say, hey, this is a really cool thing. It's going to be really neat to get this education right in our homes, right to our computer. We sure appreciate that because we need to spread the word and get as many people watching and such as possible because then our sponsors love us. Anyway, have yourself a great evening. Once again, thank you for watching. This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV.